How's it going everybody? This is Video Boy, and welcome to another tutorial video. So, you already started a big libgdx project using the setup tool, but now you realize that you need an extra library for something like AI or maybe networking or basically anything else. This quick tutorial will show you guys how to add in external libraries to libgdx projects built with Gradle. After this video, you'll be able to utilize any JVM library in your libgdx projects even if they were not in the libgdx setup. So this tutorial will work both on Eclipse and IntelliJ as well as Android Studio so there's no worries on what IDE you want to use. The first thing you want to do is to get the Gradle code to add in the libraries. So this is basically just a simple line of code that starts with the keyword compile that will tell Gradle uh, where to load in these libraries from. As well it will also tell it the version number and uh, a couple other little details. So you can do this by either going directly to the GitHub page of the project for the library that you want to use. And if the code's not there, a good place to find it is at mvnrepository.com. They have a list of pretty much all of the libraries using Gradle. So you can easily find it there, just search for it, and then uh, click the Gradle tab and you'll be able to find it. So once you have this code, you'll need to open your main build.gradle file in your libgdx project. Use the one at the root of your project and not the other ones inside your desktop or Android or whatever folder. In this file you can scroll down and see that it is separated into different projects for each platform your app is supporting. In most cases you'll only need to use the core project as the other projects all take dependencies from the core in the end. However, some libraries have different parts split up for different platforms such as the libgdx websockets library by czyzby. That's fine, just follow the instructions given in their documentation. So now just paste the copied code into the dependencies block and there you go, it's added. Now you're going to need to refresh your project so Gradle can download the library to use it. In Eclipse, just highlight all your projects in the project pane, right click and scroll down to Gradle and hit refresh all. And if you're using IntelliJ or Android Studio, you can get a pop-up that will ask you to sync. Just click the Sync Now button and it'll handle the rest for you. If it doesn't show up, you can open the Gradle tab on the right side of the IntelliJ screen and hit the Refresh button at the top. There is one final step that may be required, but only if your app supports the HTML5 GWT platform. You'll need to manually add in the GWT modules. To do that, go to the library's GitHub page again and look for a line of XML code that says Inherits. Just copy it and then go into your project's HTML folder. Then into the source until you see a file called gdxdefinitions.gwt.xml. You'll also see a super dev one, but don't worry about it. You'll see other inherit statements there as well. Just paste the code into that file where the other inherit statements are and there's no need to refresh this one. I also want to note that some libraries such as libgdx websockets even require you to initialize the library in your project's code for different kinds of projects for different platforms. libgdx websockets requires you to put common websockets.initiate in your desktop Android and iOS launcher main methods and for your HTML5 and GWT launcher they require you to to put the line of code gwtwebsockets.initiate. So just to keep that in mind, uh, just check out the documentation of the library you want to use and they usually point this stuff out. If not, and your project's not working, you can just check out their test code. They pretty much always have a test program for you to try out. So that's it for this video. If it was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.